Hi there, I'm Stuart Smith, PJ Professional, and welcome to this video on the lob shot. So there you've just seen me hit a lob shot from a tight lie. So pretty much when you've got a lob shot, you're gonna have two lies. You're gonna have a tight lie, which means you're on the fairway or certainly the short cut stuff, or you're gonna be in slightly thicker, rougher grass. These two ways involve two quite different techniques. So when you see the guys on the TV do a massive swing and they hit the ball when it pops up, they're always in grass when they do that. Very rarely would they choose to play that type of shot off a tight lie because if they get it wrong, the ball's either gonna thin miles away or just hit a duff. They're much more accurate with the technique I'm about to show you and they can probably get it up and down more often than not from this tight lie with this type of technique. So before we go into technique of things, let's understand what the lob shot is all about. So. If I was to ask you that as a question, you would all say, well, we've got to get lots of height on the ball because we want it to, to stop and everything. Well, the lob shot pretty much means that once the ball hits the green, we need it to stop quickly. So it could be because we've got a bunker in the way like here, or you might have a whole lot of rough ground to, to carry and the pins cut close to the edge of the, the green. So it doesn't necessarily mean you need height. What it does mean is that you need the ball to stop quickly so let's make sure you understand that a lob shot's about the ball stopping quickly more than the height we're not necessarily after lobbing it up however in order to get the ball to stop quickly what we do need we need to hit the ball or the shot with a lot of loft so if we hit a shot with a lot of loft the effect of playing a shot with a lofted club or a lofted club at impact is that the effect will be height. So height in the lob shot is more about the effect of the shot rather than what you're trying to do. We're not after height, we're after the ball once it lands to stop. So that's why the two techniques can be quite different because when you have a tight lie, we can rely on spin. So you can rely on a good strike with a good wedge to get the ball to spin, so you don't necessarily need so much height. When you're coming out of the thicker grass, the grass is going to get in the way of, of the groove. You're not going to get as, as much spin. We're going to be swinging through faster. The club's probably not going to be striking the ball, therefore we go under it. And all those things, therefore, make the ball go up a lot higher. So you're after the ball to stop more than you're after the ball to get height. So in order to do that, the club you use is very, very important. So here I've got the S18 Mizuno wedge. I've got 60 degrees of loft. And if you're accurate enough, you don't need to have too much bounce. The majority of people do want bounce because it helps you. If you catch the ground slightly heavy, it will just catch the floor and then skirt it its way through. I also think that depending on the golf course you play at, that will determine the amount of bounce you are. So here I'm at Thetford Golf Club and we're on sand, therefore we're a very dry golf course. The grass is, is quite sparse, therefore if you have too much bounce, I believe it makes the shot a little bit harder because the club can bounce and catch the ball. If you're at a much greener golf course, perhaps you've got some rivers running through it or, or some water where you've got some nice lush grass, you would then probably want more bounce because you want the club to not hit the ground if it's too soft. So I would have a look at that when you look at your wedges, but what I will say is that these are the best wedges that I've ever used. The design on them is fantastic to give you that low shot as well where you can spin it so how they've designed this top part is thicker on the more lofted clubs moving the center of gravity up the club face and as you saw on that shot i just hit the ball can go over without being too high and generate an awful lot of spin you certainly notice that more but when you're further back as i say for a lob shot we're not too fussed about it so let's take a look at the lie so i'll zoom in on the camera here so you can see the ball So as you can see here, we have a very, very tight lie. So that's where the club sits down and there's not a lot of room between the ball and the ground. So here, this type of lob shot requires a little bit less of a swing, a little bit less speed than if we were in thicker grass, but here your strike has to be a bit more accurate. So if we were to come in steep on a shot like this, you risk the chance of catching the ground first. So what we're looking to do is to come in quite shallow, strike the bottom of the ball forwards and trust the fact that the loft of the club will 
pop the ball up into the air. If we come down too steep, and again, this is where I think a lot of golfers go wrong, where they tend to have, have the ball back in their stance, that will increase your angle of attack. So you have a much steeper angle of attack. It will make the shot more aggressive. Well, we don't want to be aggressive if we're hitting a lob shot, and you've got much more chance to duff it into the bunker. So one of the things that I see particularly wrong with amateurs is that they have the ball back when you're going to hit a lob shot. Now, if I was going to hit this, I want the club to come through quite shallow. So I, therefore, I don't want a steep angle of attack. The further forward you move your ball in the stance, the shallower your swing could be. So if I was going to play a lob shot, I would be somewhere like here. So you can see it's well forward in my stance. My weight is on my left hand side. And all this stuff about you have to have your hands ahead of the ball, rubbish. Depending on the shot you want to hit will depend on where your hands are in relation to the ball. So if I was going to hit a running chip, you can see, yes, my hands are a long way ahead of the ball. But in relation to my body, they're just by my, inside my left leg. If I was going to hit a lob shot, you can see that my hands are probably behind the ball, but in relation to my body, they're in exactly the same place. So for all shots when you chip, your hand almost remains there, and we just manipulate the club face and the angle of attack by moving the ball in our stance. So certainly for this tight lie, I would look to have the ball forward in my stance. And what I also try to do is that I try to get this leading edge to sit as tight as possible to the ground. So if you've got a big bounce and it's up in the air, to me, if I can see that, that makes it a little bit more uncomfortable. So I like to get that leading edge tight. Do I stand open? Depending on how hard the shot is, in other words, how quickly I've got to get the ball to stop, because in theory, the more loft will generate less roll. Not bothered about height, as I said earlier. So if I open myself up a tiny bit and turn this 60 into 65, maybe even 70, then when I hit the shot, the ball will have less forward energy in it, okay? So that's the only reason why I might choose to open up the club face. So technique-wise, I would certainly use my shoulders here, as you can see, they're going back and through, but I've also got some wrist action. Very, very important, we do have a little bit of wrist action. If I go like this, it's too long a swing and too weak. There's no way I could hit the ball that far with just hurting my shoulders without wrists. And the other thing what wrists enable me to do, which golfers don't think about, is that when you go through impact, you want to manipulate that club face. So what I mean by that is if I come through, let's say we come through at this angle here and I do my normal wrist roll, can you see how actually I've closed the club face off? Well, we don't want that. If we want the ball to stop, we need to hit the shot with as much loft as possible. That reduces run. So as I go through, what I tend to do is I will tend to actually keep the club face open it or maybe even open it up more as I go through impact. So if I start from this angle, you can see how I can create a lot more loft just by holding the club face off as I go through impact. So I have my weight forwards. I'm leaning on the left-hand side, and as you can see, it's back and through. So this, I'm able to be quite aggressive on this type of shot. And as you can see, as I explained earlier, it's not that big a swing. So it's not this huge thing where we go up and down. I think that that makes you swing too slow. Too slow means you're not going to commit to the shot. If you commit to the shot, you can generate spin. So spin is, is created by speed. So if we can get the club to whip through the shot, you have much more chance of imparting more spin on the ball. If I swing slowly, what it will do, it might get the ball to land softly, but it's not going to give the ball as much spin. And I don't want to take the risk off of a tight lie to actually go too slow and let the ground stop the club. I want to make sure that my club gets through the shot. So as you can see, it's back and it's through and I'm almost whipping it through. But your body does rotate when you do short game. Everyone that thinks you go hands and arms is too awkward. Watch what my body does. You see how I'm rotating? My hips are rotating. They're controlling. It's just like I'm rotating my rib cage or my middle around my spine. Definitely you do use your body. And as I go back, as I come through, you can see how much I hold the club face off. I'm not scooping. Okay, let's understand that. I'm not trying to scoop the ball up into the air. I am trying to strike the bottom of that ball forwards. If I strike it forwards, I have the club face at the correct angle, i.e. as open as possible. Then I'll get the decent strike. It will land on the green and hopefully it won't roll too far.
let's have a go at the shop. So I've got the ball forwards in my stance, my weight's on my left hand side. Okay, let's have a go. I'm only 18 inches from the hole. So you see how the shot was quite short and quite aggressive. I'm not afraid to strike the ball. I've took a tiny bit of turf, not much, but the ball went straight up in the air and then it landed and we've only got a little tap in for our par. And how's that for a bit of luck? Just hold it first time. So as you can see there, when we're in thicker grass, we play the shot very, very differently. Let's talk about how we play it. So you've just seen me hit a shot from the longer grass and a bit of luck to it, it popped into the hole, which is always nice. But as we said, the technique was very, very different to what we do on a tight lie. So on the tight lie one, you're really looking to strike into the ball quite aggressively to generate some spin. When you have a lie like this where we're in grass, what we're worried about is the club being stopped by this grass here. So the, the club's got to go through a lot more grass, which is a lot more friction. So that is why we do a, a longer swing. So as opposed to just going back through through here, if I did that and I went through and I went too far under the ball, which is quite easy to do, the ball's just going to end in this little hollow here and it won't reach the green. So we need the full let them swing to generate some, some distance as we're not going to be anywhere near as accurate with the strike when we're in this type of grass. So what I would do here, as you can see, I'm doing a nice big swing back and through. As I go back, I do open up the club face. So if we look at the club face here, that would be taking it back closed. When I do the backswing, I am going to roll the club face open. When I come down, I hold that club face open again. That helps to make the club face nice and thin. So that's thick, that's thin there, which will then get the club to skirt through the grass an awful lot easier. And that will then obviously hit the ball with lots of loft and send it very, very high because the club face is so open. But more importantly, once it lands, it should land with hardly any roll. So I would take a wider stance for this one than what I did for the one off the uh, tight lie. So as you can see, I'm, I'm here. So I've got it all the way down there. I actually stand further back for this one. So it's a bit like a bunker shot. The lower you can get your hands, so the more horizontal the shaft is, again, the thinner and the, the, the smaller the club head becomes, making it easier to get through the grass. The last thing we want to do is to go through with the club face too high because even if you do whip through and under the ball's going to catch too much of the club face and it will send it forwards remember this is a bigger swing so we don't want too much forwards energy going through into the ball so i'm there my weight's fairly even i might have a little bit on the left hand side not massive amounts but as you can see i'm making sure i do this follow through the follow through is going to help move the ball forwards because we're not striking it so you could say this is similar to a bunker shot so the bunker shot they hit the sand we're not going to hit the ball where therefore the follow through helps move the ball the same as when we're in longer grass so let's have a go so again aim it there you can see i'm stood a bit further back Weight is a little bit on the left hand side, back and through. I've caught a little bit too much of the ball there and that's just gone a bit too far, but at least it still landed on the green. Okay, so now you've seen the two situations where you might require a lob shot type stroke or certainly a shot where we need to get the ball to stop quickly let's just have a quick recap so we've got the one that's in the longer grass the fluffier lie which is here and we've got this one here which is i've managed to find a, a tight lie that one there so this one here as i say because it's a tight lie sat on the ground we can't really slide the club under so we need to strike into the ball so whenever you strike into the ball the ball's going to come off faster 
Okay, so therefore if you reduce the follow through, which is what this technique does, the ball hopefully won't go as far. So it's back, you see I'm going to strike. So as I said earlier, we're using our shoulders. You can see my body helps to rotate as well. Let's have a go. So we just need to try to dink this one over the uh, hump. So there we go and got that to go fairly close. So you heard the click of the ball being struck there. We have struck into it quite hard, reduced the follow through and that helps take some of the distance away, but you've got to be confident on, on that one. And then we've got the fluffy lie one where this time here, if I was to do the same technique, because the, the, the club is very, very thin, there's a chance I'm going to go under the ball, in which case it would just end down here. So what I'm going to do here is a longer stroke, slide the club under the ball, and use the weight of the club and the momentum of the swing to actually lift it through. So here we go, back, through, that's gone up, and there we go. So that's landed on. So the first one's probably about two and a half, three feet. The second one's rolled through to about eight feet. The difference is that on the first one, I can actually generate the ball to grab and check a lot more because the grooves are striking into the ball. On the second one, it's a much more of a soft landing shot and the ball will tend to have a little bit more release coming out of it. So you just need to bear that in mind when you play the shots. So this one here, I would sort of go in between the two because if I attack this how I would do off a tight lie, the ground's gonna could crumble, in which case if it crumbles I could just go under it and the ball could literally end on this, this hump here. So what I'm gonna do is sort of do a longer, slower version of the, the, the more aggressive strike. Again, I'm just gonna keep the club face open. I'm gonna slide it through so I sort of strike the bottom of the ball and I'm gonna use the, the back of the bounce here just to sort of brush along the ground, just to keep the club going so it doesn't dig in. Okay, so again, address it. Look at where you want it to go. I'll have the weight forwards in my stance. Look at where we're going. Okay, so here we go. Make sure I commit to go through the shot. There we go. Landing where we said, and I hit that pretty good there. And as you can see, that's still got about 10 foot of run on the ball but the important thing was i got the strike we're on the green and we've got a putt